We finally settle the score. Who played the cowbell on Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult? Albert Bouchard, their drummer, is with us on Rock History Music. Albert Bouchard says it's an honest mistake where most people would say, who played the cowbell on Don't Fear the Reaper? That SNL clip with Will Ferrell playing the drums getting up there. I mean, you're going, that's not the drummer. Wait a minute. Albert Bouchard was the drummer. So who really played the cowbell on Don't Fear the Reaper? After that SNL clip, and there's a link in the description if you want to see it, people started wondering. Albert Bouchard understands why people are confused and why they may not think he did it, but he did. <laughs> you know, with Don't Fear the Reaper, when you look at Wiki, and I mean, I know they're not the everything, because, uh, but when you look at that, they say you're the, you're the guy. Oh, you're the cowbell yeah. guy? Yeah. yeah, well, but but they also say that uh, Dave Lucas said he played it, and band leader Eric Bloom claims that he was the one to play it. How can there be confusion? I mean, you're the percussionist in the band at the time. I mean, wouldn't it just be you anyway? No, no. The, that confusion is well-founded because David Lucas actually did play Cowbell on Agents of Fortune, but he did not play on that song. He played on a song called Tenderloin. And, uh, you know, he was say, he was telling me, oh, yeah, I remember I came in there. You guys weren't there. And, and I, I just overdubbed some cymbals and a, and a cowbell. I said, no, that was on Tenderline. He goes, oh, oh, maybe, yeah. I said, don't you remember? You kept telling me you wanted to hear the cowbell on it. And he's like, oh, yeah. I, you know, we worked it out. You know, he, I was like, I don't want to argue with you. I know you played the cowbell on that album, but you played it on a different song. So he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So memory is a crazy thing, you know. And Eric, of course, Eric would say that because he played um, every other time when we had percussion, whether it was a tambourine or a cowbell or maracas, Eric played it. I mean, I played very little percussion until after that then then i started playing percussion on all of the records but but up until then it was eric was the percussionist so uh you know and i think i don't even remember if eric was even in the room i think that maybe he wasn't there he might have stepped out or something and i remember clearly how i came to be doing it because we had this we had randy brecker play a trumpet part on the track and the band, as great as it was, and it was really a great part, but we hated it. It was like Donald had already played a guitar solo, and they were talking about taking Don's guitar out and putting a trumpet. And we we're like, no, you know, we like the guitar solo. Let's leave that and get rid of the trumpet. So there was an extra track. So I said, hey, in that section, I'd like to play a triangle. You know, the section that goes boom, 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 boom. That part there, I was going to go boom, 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 ding, boom, 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 ding, you know, on the on the four, you know. And uh, and uh, I explained that to David Lucas and he said, oh, yeah, um, that could work. Hey, but you know what? You can do it, but I want you to play it cowbell on the verses. I'm like, what? Cowbell? Is this a joke? And he's like, no, no, I just want to hear it. Just try it, okay? Will you please try it? I said, okay. You know, so I play it. You know, and uh, I said, I don't like it. I said, Don, what do you think? And Don is, you know, Book Dharma, and who, who, you know, he wrote the song. So what do you think? Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe if you put some tape on it or something. So I put tape on the thing. I'm playing it not quite as loud. And, um, and he, and I said, I don't, I still don't get this, you know? And Don's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I kind of like it. How else could, what else you could you do? I said, well, I got a timpani mallet. I'll put, play it with a mallet, you know, it'd be like nice and soft. So that's why it doesn't even really sound like a cowbell on the record. It sounds like woodblock. But now how, you know, so how did Will Ferrell hear, even hear that? When they were mixing it, I'm saying, hey, Shelly, Shelly Yak is the mixer, you know. I said, Shelly, turn, turn the cowbell down. He's like, if I turn it down anymore, Albert, you're not going to hear it. I said, yeah. 
<laughs> I couldn't What's hear it. Wrong at the beginning until, What's yeah. wrong with that? And Don is like, no, nah, no, nah, Shelly, leave it the way it is. It's fine, Albert. It's fine. So, uh, so it's pretty low in the, in the mix. And, uh, and it doesn't even sound like a cowbell. It sounds like a woodblock or something. There's been debate. Is it a woodblock? No, it's a cowbell that's got tape wrapped around it and is being played with like a sort of hard timpani mallet. Do you still have it? The cowbell, it wasn't mine. It was David Lucas's. It belonged to David. I, I, I believe it was a JCR um, five-inch cowbell, uh, um, what you call it, uh, uh, cha-cha. Tacha Bell. Okay, I uh, don't have a lot of time, so I, I want to get to, to to the questions. By the way, an incredible project you have. This is a cavalcade of musical sounds. Sometimes there's tunes on here. I'm going. I don't know where he's going, but I like going down this road. Um, <laughs> number three in the in the collection uh, overall. Uh, this is adventurous, man. Thank you, thank you. It's supposed to be. It's an adventure. Flaming telepaths, uh, a poison in my bloodstream. It, it, this, this is, uh, and after the narration opening, um, tell me about that tune. Love it. Just love it. Yeah. Well, that was, uh, that's a song that, uh, you know, was on uh, Secret Treaties. And uh, it was a really, uh, Secret Treaties, People always say, oh, that's the best Blue Eyes to Cult record. A lot of the f hardcore fans say that. And uh, the only thing that, the thing about that record was that there was really a lot of collaboration between everybody. And that, and Flaming Telepath is a perfect example of, uh, you know, Donald came up with some lyrics and I came up with some chords and uh, Alan thought of some other thing you know and joe joe came along with what he whatever he did his bass line you know everything uh, all the iconic pieces of that uh track were created by the different guys in the group so yeah um the, a good example of uh, a collaboration we, you know uh that was to be the end of it really though <laughs> you know, then we did Agents of Fortune and, and everybody did their own thing. And, and we basically uh, copied the demos, you know, when we, uh, when we recorded. We didn't, there wasn't that much collaboration. But on the other hand, we were learning how to make records too. So uh, not as much collaboration, but it sounded better. <laughs> I think with, well with Agents of Fortune, I remember my first reaction because I didn't know the band that well. So you know, all of a sudden you get the big hit, and and people discover this band, and they go, it's like Elton John. Everyone used to talk about Elton John in the seventies. If they got him in seventy four, then they realized, oh, I have all these other albums. This is great. I can go back. Um, yeah. But I, there was a lot of this. A lot of people sang. A lot of people uh, 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 wrote, and and you know, most real music fans like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we were determined not to ever be pigeonholed. You know, we did a pretty good job for a long time. <laughs> Remember, make sure you subscribe to our channel, join our Patreon, get early access to our videos. You can make a donation to the channel. There's a link in the very top of the description. Buy a t-shirt, spread the word. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music.